Properties of logarithms. The first property that we're going to talk about is the product rule. Let b, m, and n be positive real numbers with b not equal to 1. And if that's the case, log base b of m times n is equal to log base b of m plus log base b of n. That just means that if, we, if our argument is a product or numbers that are being multiplied, we could even take a number that's not being multiplied and separate it into its factors. And when we have that product, we can separate that into two separate logarithms using addition. If you know your exponent rules, then it will help you with your logarithmic rules. Remember that logarithms are inverses of exponents, so their rules are kind of related. Remember when we're dealing with exponents, if I had something like this, um, x squared times x to the third, if our bases are being multiplied, then we add the exponents, so this would be x to the fifth. Well, it's kind of the same way um, with the logarithms. We relate multiplication and addition in the logarithmic rules. So if we have the argument that's being multiplied, we can separate it into two things that are being added. And if you'll notice, we use the same log and base when we separate it. This is called expanding a logarithmic expression. When we take a single logarithm and we expand it into more than one logarithm, then that's called expanding a logarithm. So, now we're going to use the product rule to expand each logarithmic expression. In A, we have log base 6 of 7 times 11. So, we have a product here, 7 times 11, and we can separate this logarithm into two logarithms. We just rewrite the log and the base both times and separate that product. So, log base 6 of 7 plus log base 6 of 11. Okay, for B we have log of 100x. Well, remember anytime we have a number and a variable touching each other, that represents multiplication. So we can separate this by using addition. And remember, if we don't see a base that's understood to be base 10, this is a common log, so we don't have to write a base when we separate this. This is just log base 10 of 100 plus log x. Now, anytime we can simplify our logarithm, we need to do that. Well, this part of the logarithm, the first part of the logarithm, has an argument of 100, and we know that that understood base is 10. So we could rewrite this as log of 10 squared, because 100 is the same thing as 10 squared. And then we can use that property of common logs that says um, if we have the same base and the same argument, they just cancel out, and I'm left with whatever the power is. So that turns to a 2 plus log of x, and that would be my expanded logarithm. The quotient rule says let b, m, and n be positive real numbers with b not equal to 1. And if that's the case, log base b of m divided by n is equal to log base b of n, m minus log base b of n. Again, we can relate this to our exponent rules. Remember when we um, have exponents, if we're dividing like bases, then we subtract the exponents, so this would be the same thing as x to the 5 minus 3, which would be x squared. So in our exponents, division and subtraction are related. It's the same thing with our logarithms. Division and subtraction are related. Again, when we do this, when we separate a single logarithm into two separate logarithms, that's called expanding the logarithmic expression. 
So now we're going to use the quotient rule to expand each logarithmic expression. Um, and it does matter which one goes first. Whatever the numerator is, that needs to go first. And again, we write whatever the log and the base is with each part. So this would be log base 8 of 23 goes first minus log base 8 of x. We can't simplify either of those, so that's our answer. In B, this is the natural log, and it's the same properties because it's a logarithm. Just remember that the natural log is log base E. All right, so if I separate this, this is going to be the natural log of E to the fifth power minus natural log of 11. Okay, so if we look at this to see if we can simplify. Remember that natural log has a base of e, so this part would cancel out and I'm just left with a 5. So my answer would be 5 minus natural log 11. Next is the power rule. Again, for the power rule, let b and it should be m well, no, just b and m be positive real numbers with b not equal to 1. Um, and let p be any real number. Okay, so p is going to stand for our power. Um, so if we have a logarithm that's raised to some power like we have here, this power rule says that we can take that power and pull it to the front, and it's going to be multiplied. All right, so... Again, this relates to our exponent rules. If I had x to the third squared, then we multiply those two exponents, and this would be x to the sixth. Okay, so the power in our exponents is related to multiplication. So in our logarithm, the power in our logarithm is related to multiplication. So now we're going to use the power rule to expand each logarithmic expression. All right, so if we have a power, we're just going to pull our power to the front. And this would be 9 log base 6 of 3. And that's it. Okay, for B, we don't have a power. This is um, a radical. But remember, we can rewrite a radical as a power. Um, if we have a radical, we can rewrite it as, a, as a, a rational exponent or a fraction in our exponent. So this would be the same thing as ln of x to the one-third power. Remember, when we're writing our exponents, um, if we have an exponent that is uh, a radical, this bottom number is the index of my root. Roots grow on, grow on the bottom. The top number is my power. Okay, so now that we have changed that um, radical into an exponent, we can pull our, our power to the front, and that would be one-third ln of x. In C, even though this is um, not just a single term or single number or single term, um, it's being raised to a power, so we pull our power to the front and rewrite this as 2 log of x plus 4. Sometimes it's necessary to use more than one property with logarithms. Um, in this next example, we're going to have to use more than one logarithmic property to expand the expression. Okay, so let's just take it one step at a time. If I look at the argument, I can see that we have this x to the fourth power and this cube root of y being multiplied. So the way that we expand that, remember, multiplication is expanded using addition. So that would be the same thing as log base b of x to the fourth plus log base b of the cube root of y. Okay, so then 
um, that cube root, we can't do anything with a, a, a radical, so we need to change it to an exponent. Okay, so this would be log base b of x to the fourth plus log base b of y to the one-third power. Now we can pull our exponents to the front and write this as 4 log base b of x plus one-third log base b of y. Okay, here's another one that we're going to have to use more than one property on. Um, so the first thing I notice is that these two uh, terms are being divided. So the way we expand that is using subtraction. All right, so I'd write this as log base 5 of the square root of x minus log base 5 of 25y to the third. All right, so then the next thing I notice is that this 25 and this y to the third are being multiplied. So I need to expand that, and we expand multiplication by using addition. All right, so let me write log base 5. I'm going to go ahead and change that square root of x to have a power instead of a radical. And so if I write the square root as a power, it'd be 1 half minus, now, I'm subtracting this whole denominator. So I need to put that in parentheses because the whole thing is being subtracted. And now I'm fixing to separate it into two separate things. So the whole thing is being subtracted, log base 5 of 25 plus log base 5 of y to the third. Okay, so you can either leave that in parentheses, or if you want to get rid of the parentheses, then this negative needs to be distributed, and that's why it was important that we put it in parentheses, because that negative is going to go to the whole denominator, which is both of these terms. Okay, so I have log base 5 of x to the 1 half power minus log base 5 of 25 plus log base 5 of y to the third. Okay, so I see powers. I don't want to have any powers, so I can pull those powers to the front. All right, so that 1 half is going to be pulled to the front, and the 3 is going to be pulled to the front. So I have 1 half log base 5 of x minus log. Now, remember, any time we can simplify a logarithm, we need to do so. So any time our argument can be rewritten as the base, to some power, we need to do that. Just like we did the 100, we were trying to get it to be the base of 10, and so we rewrote it as 10 squared. Well, it's the same thing. Now our base is 5, and we can rewrite 25 as 5 squared. Okay, plus... Oh, I didn't distribute. <laughs> okay, so let me back up a little bit. This should have been changed to a negative. I said to distribute it, and I, I didn't. Okay, so when I distributed that negative, this to turn this turned to minus. Okay, so minus 3 log base 5 of y. Okay, we're almost done. Um, the first logarithm and the last logarithm are done. But right here in the middle, remember that... Um, if our base and our logarithm are the same, they cancel out, okay? So we're left with 1 half log base 5 of x, and then that would be minus 2, okay, because my base and my logarithm canceled out, 
minus 3 log base 5 of y. So we've been taking single logarithms and expanding them, but we can also go the other way and take separate logarithms and condense them. So we can condense a logarithmic expression when we rewrite the sum or difference of two or more logarithms into a single logarithmic expression. And the properties are the same, they're just backwards. If we have logarithm, as long as the logarithms have the same base, <clears throat> so if you'll notice this is log base b in both of these, they're being added so we can condense them using multiplication. These logs, again, they have to have the same base. They're being subtracted so we can condense them using uh, division. Here we have uh, a, a number that's being multiplied times a logarithm. We can um, bring it as the power of the logarithm. So let's condense some logarithms. Okay, these logarithms in A are um, they, they're the common log, but they both have the same log, so that means we can condense them, and since they're being added, we're going to condense them using multiplication. So this would be the same thing as log, it's the common log, of 25 times 4. Well, 25 times 4 is 100, so this is the same thing as log of 100. Okay, well, since this log has an understood base of 10, we can rewrite 100 to have the same base. So this is the same as log of 10 squared. That understood base of 10 and this log of 10 cancel out and we're left with 2. And that's our answer. <clears throat> okay, for B, these two logarithms are separated using subtraction, and the way that we condense is by using division. So we just write our logarithm, log, again it's an understood base of 10, and we take the first logarithm, and that's going to go on top as our numerator, and the second logarithm goes as our denominator. And there's no way to simplify this, so we're done. In order to condense logarithms, the coefficient of the logarithm must be 1 before we can condense them. So if we see some coefficient like this other than 1, we have to get rid of it before we can condense the logarithms. So the way that we get rid of the coefficient is we bring it as the power um, of that argument. Okay, So it's just going to go on the, the logarithm that it's attached to, or on the argument of the logarithm that it's attached to. So this 2 ln of x changes to ln of x squared plus ln of x plus 1. Okay, so now to put these two together, they're, they're being added, so we're going to put them together using multiplication, and we have ln of x squared times x plus 1. Okay, so I would write it like this, I would put brackets or parentheses around that whole argument to show that all of that is the argument of the logarithm or the natural log. Okay, so in B, again, we need to um, get rid of this coefficient. So I'm going to put it as the power on the x. And then we also have a coefficient in front of the second logarithm, that one-third, and we're going to bring it and put it as the power to the x plus 5. <laughs> So this would be ln of x squared plus ln of x plus 5 to the one-third power. Again, these are being added, so we put them together using multiplication. All right, so this would be ln of x squared times x plus 5 to the one-third power. And again, well, let me use brackets just to break that up. Now, if you wanted to, instead of writing that one-fifth as a one-third power, you could uh, write it like this as the cube root 
of x plus 5. But either way is acceptable. All right, here we have um, a 2 as our coefficient. That needs to be brought as the power on that x minus 3. And this time we are subtracting, so that means we need to put them together using division. So first of all, we have log of x minus 3 squared. Okay, and now we're, we're going to put these two logarithms together, and we would get log of x minus 3 squared over x. Okay, in D we have three separate logarithms. So first of all, we're going to take each logarithm and bring the coefficient as the power of the argument. All right, so I have log base b of x to the one-fourth power minus log base b of 5 squared minus log base b of y to the 10th. Now, we have a log minus a log minus a log, and we know that subtraction, when we put it together, is division. So we can't have something divided by something divided by something. So we're going to have to change this to just two um, operations. Okay, so if I put up a set of parentheses like this, that's kind of like undoing distributing, so that would change this sign to a plus. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to group those together using parentheses, and then because this is a minus, that changes this sign to a plus. Okay, so now we can put these together. Um, I have log base b of x to the one-fourth, or we could write that as log base b of the fourth root of x, however you want to do it, um, minus Okay, so now I'm going to put these two together using multiplication because they are being um, added. Okay, so first of all, this would be log base b of, I'm going to go ahead and write 5 squared as 25. Okay, and then it's got to be multiplied times the other argument, which is y to the tenth. Okay, so now I put I, I put those two things in parentheses together as 25 times y to the tenth. So now we have to put together the first log and the second log, um, and they're being subtract, subtracted, so we're going to use division. Okay, so log base b of, I'm going to write it as the fourth root of x over 25 y to the tenth. And then that is my condensed logarithm. All right, the last thing we're going to talk about is the change of base property. Um, the change of base property says for any logarithmic bases a and b and any positive number m, we can take a logarithm that has a base other than, um, or a, any base, and we can separate it into two separate logarithms with a base that we choose. So if you'll notice, they're taking this log, it's log base b of m, but they're taking log of m and dividing it by log of b. So we have a log of b, dividing it by log of b. And they chose the base to be a. Well, the reason why we want to do this is most of our calculators will not allow us to put in a base other than base 10 or base e. Um, remember I showed you that our calculators have those two buttons. Uh, if it's just log, 
that's log base 10, and LN stands for natural log, and that's log base E. We can't put in a, a log, say, with base 2 or log base 5 directly into our calculator. So this change of base property allows us to put it in our calculator, um, and we can change our bases to be, of course, we would want to change it to be a base that's in our calculator. So we could use base 10 or base E and rewrite our logarithm like that to be able to evaluate it or put it in our calculator. So let's do that. This says use common logs to evaluate log base 7 of 2,506. Okay, so if we're going to use common logs to do that, we would rewrite this as log of 2,506 divided by log of 7. Okay, so this is common log. Um, if I don't write a base, it's understood to be base 10. Now we can put that directly into our calculator. So when I do that, when I put that into my calculator, I get... Um, 4.0, and then it's 219, so if we just round to the hundredths place, 4.02, okay? We can also, like I said, this change of base formula allows us to use any base we want. It just has to be the same base on the top and the bottom. Okay, so in the next um, exercise, it says use natural logs to evaluate the same logarithm. So I could rewrite this as ln of 2,506 divided by ln of 7, and if you put that in your, your calculator, you should see that you should get the same answer. So it doesn't matter what base we use, as long as we use the same base, both in the top and the bottom. This is the change of base formula, which allows us to put any logarithm into our calculator.